Hello everybody, Chris Prescott here with Master CDP Studios, coming at you live. I'm bringing you another podcast for YouTube. Um, this will also be available on SoundCloud, and I think I'm going to actually just start having my podcast uh, become available for download on SoundCloud as well. And I might even do a separate show, a separate podcast to to be a little more raw and uncut. I think what I'll do is for YouTube, I'll try to keep them shorter, um, not too vulgar either, just because I know on YouTube, you know, you reach a broader audience. And, you know, my goal is to attract, you know, everyone, all kinds of people uh, to my business. Um, and YouTube is probably going to be the main way that everyone or the majority of uh, the people that do find me or hear me, that's probably going to be the platform they find me more on. Um, and of course, you know, there's all kinds of age groups on YouTube. So I think I'll, I'll keep it a little more cleaner and a little more professional on YouTube when it comes to the podcast. And uh, I'll have more un, un, uh, unedited and uncut and raw podcast for SoundCloud and um, maybe some other platforms that podcasts are available. I'm going to start looking into that. Um, for today's episode, though, what I want to do is I actually want to talk some big wrestling news over the weekend. It was the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 and SummerSlam weekend, so there's a lot to go over on that. I'll try to keep that as brief as possible, but go through the main bullet points on that. And then uh, how I would like to start today's episode is with some Destiny 2 news. So if you weren't aware, today Dest or Bungie launched a launch trailer. For uh, Destiny 2, um, I actually just was able to watch it. Gotta say, of course, like always, love the love the music. Looks like it shows a little more. It looks like it leaves off where uh, where the end of the uh, beta, the first mission that you play. So it le looks like the trailer leaves off from there, and it kind of just shows you uh, Gaul a little more. The guy, the leader of the Red Legion, the guy that captures the Traveler. And uh, takes over the tower, so looks looks pretty good. I'm it just I'm more excited every week that goes by. We get closer and closer to the release of Destiny 2, so I'm getting really excited for that. And uh, for those of you that, that don't know this, that uh, Destiny 2 for PS4, the uh, client will be available to download on August 30th. That way, uh, you can have it already downloaded on your PS4, and you know when. When release day comes, it'll be ready to play at midnight. Cannot wait. And uh, for those of you that are going to play or pick it up on PC, the PC beta testing begins on August 28th if you pre-ordered the game, and then on August 29th for anyone else that hasn't pre-ordered it. And then uh, as far as uh, the, uh, the release uh, for the PC version of Destiny 2, that's actually not going to be released until October 24th. So the Xbox and PS4 versions will be released on September 6th, and the uh, PC versions of Destiny 2 will be uh, released on October 24th. So still time to pre-order your PC versions there, and your PS4 and Xbox One versions as well. And uh, just keep in mind, I will be writing this, or I will be running the contest uh, for the $30 gift card giveaway next month. Um, when I either hold a live stream of my gameplay of Destiny 2 or, like I mentioned before, I might just record it and then I will upload it to YouTube. And then in that video, you will comment that you subscribe to my channel and uh, then you'll be eligible to be entered or be eligible for the $30 gift card. And then I will announce the winner the following week on the uh, next podcast that I upload to YouTube and SoundCloud uh, the week after Destiny 2 is released. So look forward to uh, to all of that and uh, just subscribe to my channel if you want to stay updated on the contest and anything else that I have coming your way any other content that will be coming up on do uh, my YouTube channel here and um, speaking of content a lot of pro wrestling content uh, a lot of pro wrestling news uh, for today's episode so without further ado I will get started we'll start with NXT TakeOver Brooklyn man that show was freaking awesome, like always. Like like every NXT TakeOver uh, pay-per-view special, um, they always they always go above and beyond. And, you know, unfortunately for the main roster, Raw and SmackDown, uh, they, they make them look like a bunch of amateurs. Like, they don't know what they're doing. And NXT is supposed to be the developmental uh, 
program, you know, basically where everyone's supposed to start uh, so they can get promoted to the main roster. But it kind of seems like it's the other way around because there's actually news that uh, there's going to be a big roster shakeup on the main roster here. WWE is going to be pulling guys from NXT to come up to the main roster, Raw and SmackDown. Um, so that could be very uh, a very clear, ind- clear indication that tonight's Raw and tomorrow's SmackDown are going to be very newsworthy, and there's going to be a lot to talk about that after those two shows are done and over with. Um, so, yeah, I mean, guys like Bobby Roode, the Authors of Pain, uh, a few others from NXT are scheduled or talked uh, in the talks of coming up. And then uh, you have talks of possibly Dolph Ziggler going down to NXT, which, you know, to me and anyone that's actually a Dolph Ziggler fan and recognizes how good he is, uh, in our minds, it's going to be more of a promotion for Dolph Ziggler going to NXT because, man, uh, he, he's just too good. He's so experienced, and he's been in WWE for a long time. It's just it's crazy that they haven't utilized him the right way. Dolph Ziggler knows how to use Dolph Ziggler, and he knows how to go out there and tell a story and sell and, and make his opponents look like a million bucks. I mean, he has everything written all over him that says main event, WWE champion, yet they won't let him, and they continue to hold him down. I understand Vince's concerns is because Dolph's had so many concussions. He doesn't think, or he doesn't think he can trust Dolph with the title, you know, thinking that he might just get a concussion tomorrow and have to be out and, you know, give up the title. But you know what? He goes to NXT. He is going to shine there. That guy is going to be in the main event. He's probably going to be a multi-time XT, NXT uh, title holder by the time his NXT run is said and done. And uh, he's going to have excellent matches with guys like Drew McIntyre. Um, if Bob, well, I don't think Bobby Roode's going to stay down there. But Hideo, maybe Aleister Black if he stays there. Um, Johnny Garango, uh, Ciampa. So many guys down in NXT that Dolph can have a great match with and have a great program and feud with. So look forward to that. But uh, let's get started with the uh, results from uh, NXT TakeOver. So the first match, hot opener, great match. Johnny Garango, uh, Gargano versus uh, Andre Almas, Cien. And a uh, very, very, uh, very good match. Back and forth, fast-paced, hard-hitting. Both guys really laid it out there on the line. Johnny Gargano, of course, playing the underdog role. And Andre playing the uh, cocky heel with his new uh with his new valet vega um adds adds a new dynamic to his character and uh he's really embracing this heel role of his i mean people already were kind of booing him before he even had a heel chain or heel turn but you know he's really really fitting in with his character now he's really comfortable you could tell i mean he was already comfortable when he debuted but now it's like okay i found my character this is me now so you can tell and the confidence just showed in the ring against Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano, once once again, Mr. Johnny Wrestling over here, uh, proving that moniker, you know, living up to that moniker. He's just so good in the ring, so smooth and fluent. Uh, it just, it's always fun to watch him uh, throw it down in, in the ring, and uh, I can't wait. I w- was really hoping that, you know, Ciampa uh, was going to be ready for this pay-per-view. You know, I didn't think he was actually going to be out for this one haven't really followed NXT for the last few weeks or so up until the uh, the last week before the takeover show you know I kind of watched some highlights here and there was mainly watching the main roster stuff but uh man today or this week will be a reset I'll be able to start watching NXT again you know since takeover is over with now we have new storylines newcomers uh into the picture so it's gonna be a really exciting to see what NXT is gonna have in store for us and the, the next match got another match that was just brutal. Uh, Sanity versus the Authors of Pain. I mean, when the match was the match was announced, you already knew this was going to be like a dem- demolition derby. Man, this match did not disappoint at all. The, the Authors of Pain, ever since they took the titles, they've been on a tear. They've been destroying everybody. I mean, they had up until uh, this past Saturday, which, by the way, Sanity did defeat Authors of Pain. Uh, no one has been able to beat the Authors of Pain. No one's been able to touch them. They've been untouchable. It reminds me of the Ascension, which, you know, RIP because, you know, now they're dead on the main roster because there's really nothing going on for them up there. But that's basically what the Authors of Pain are doing. They're they're filling that, they're fitting that role. They are the monster, dominant, untouchable tag teams uh, and tag team champs or former tag team champs of NXT. And they did that. They fit in that role so well. 
I mean, you believed going into this pay-per-view that Sanity wasn't going to be the one to beat them, even though Sanity is pretty crazy themselves. They have two big dudes and Alexander Wolf and uh, Killian Dane, both really big guys. And that was a great surprise there because, you know, they've been building it up that it was going to be uh, Alexander Wolf and uh, Killian Dane taking on the Authors of Pain. But then they did the old switcheroo uh, at the beginning of the match and you found out that it was gonna actually going to be Eric Young in the match. And Eric Young just added that experience, that veteran experience to the match. You could tell. I mean, God, that match was just was excellent. A lot of action, high, high, high octane action, fast paced, hard hitting. Um, Eric Young, you know, you could tell he went in there to kind of guide the younger guys. So, that, so you know, kudos to Eric Young. He did an excellent job filling that role and just uh, being the uh, the other half of Sanity. That match couldn't have gone any better. I mean, it, it was. I mean, I, I was happy with that match. Great match. Sanity defeated Author Pain, but then the more newsworthy uh, tidbit from that match came when. Kyle O'Reilly, who actually already debuted with NXT, showed up with his uh, former tag team, Ring of Honor tag team partner, Bobby Fish, Red Dragon, and they laid waste to everybody after the match was over. So that was a pretty uh, pretty nice surprise there. The crowd went crazy for that, and uh, they were very responsive to that little segment afterwards. So I look forward to that, and uh, we'll go over more how, uh, how these guys played a, a bigger role later on in the night. But the, the next match we have... Hideo Itami versus Aleister Black. And another match uh, I was talking about on my uh, f- my last podcast here that I predicted the match was going to be very hard-hitting. It was going to be a strike fest. And, man, that one did not disappoint at all. That was probably, oh, wow, T- tough to call match of the night for that one, but that may have been match of the night. Close... Coming up to a close second, if not, if anything, to the uh, women's title match, which I'll go over after. Uh, just just the start of the Aleister Black versus Hideo Atami match. You know, Hideo came out looking pissed off. You know, he's ready to whoop someone's a- ass. And uh, out comes Aleister Black to the band Code Orange performing his theme song. That had a WWE monday night raw attitude era feel that actually that whole show did and then when they had the band perform for alistair black that really reminded me of it that really reminded me of the uh the attitude era days you know like when motorhead would play or the band that did degeneration x song would play live at the pay-per-views that's that's what that reminded me of so that was really cool to see that uh, but the match itself, man, Alistair uh, looks like he may have broken his nose. I actually didn't follow up on the update on that, but he was busted open in the nose area. Those guys were just... It It was the closest thing on the card uh, to an MMA fight or a kickbox fight. Because, <laughs> man, those guys were just going toe-to-toe. Those shots, those strikes were brutal, man. Uh, you, you, you could feel it. You could see it in their faces. You could see the impact, and that was just crazy. That was ridiculous. Great match, all around, just just fun match, exciting. Can't wait to see what they have in store for Aleister Black. Is he going to stay in NXT? Because I also heard that he actually might be getting called up soon, which you would think maybe Hideo would be being uh, being called up. He, he's kind of just hasn't really uh, taken off like they expected him to. I mean, when he was first coming, people were really receptive. They couldn't wait to see Hideo uh, Tommy there and, you know, one of the dream matches would have been another Daniel Bryan Hideo match. Of course, that happened uh, outside of the WWE Kenta, uh, but but yeah, just just a real shame um, with Hideo because there's so much promise there. There was so much promise there, and I'm hoping that this heel character is a way to repackage him and kind of you know reset Hideo in WWE. And can't really say. If this means he's going up to the main roster just because he lost, or if Alistair's going up to the main roster, Alistair has yet to be defeated in NXT. So I, I almost feel like they want to probably keep him there for a little bit. Maybe Hideo will go up to Raw or SmackDown. I mean, he's experienced enough. He's good enough in the ring. It's just something's just not clicking. And it could be the, you know, the plague of injuries keeping him out. Uh, you know, we haven't really been able to see much of him because of injuries just plaguing his career. Um, so far in NXT, he hasn't been able to really, you know, fully let go and just go full throttle here. 
Um, other than, of course, his hard-hitting matches, but, you know, he really hasn't had much time um, in NXT because of the injuries. So hopefully after this pay-per-view, uh, you know, in the following weeks, we find out more on what's going to happen with Adeo. Hopefully things start to pick up for him because he's a really, he's excellent in the ring. I mean, you can't, you can't talk bad on his uh, in-ring work because, you know, the guy has it. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully there's better things to come for him. And uh, the next match, which could possibly be match of the night, Asuka defeats Ember Moon. Uh, Asuka retains her NXT Women's Championship. That was an excellent match. Ember Moon really showed a lot of what she can do in that ring that night. Uh, she really laid it on the line. She took it to Asuka, took the fight to her. I, I would say the closest that anyone has ever came to beating Asuka. Um, these two have had wars before. You know, they've met outside of NXT before. I believe in Shimmer, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, these two had an excellent match. I mean, their first match was good, but this match was even better. This one, you actually kind of didn't know. You're like, oh, is Asuka actually going to lose? But no. So she won. She won the match. She retains her title. And now Asuka is sitting at a 506-day reign as NXT Women's Champion, the longest championship reign in the modern era, um, beating out CM Punk, who did 494 days or whatever it was, 493. Uh, she beat out the New Day's tag team reign. She's j just all across the board, longest running champ right now. Longest reigning champ. She's probably the, other than Lesnar, the one that's booked the most strongly and the most dominant, the most untouchable right now in all of WWE is Asuka. It's awesome, and I'm really hoping that they're going to work up to what, you know, I'm hoping for next year, and that would be a uh, Ronda Rousey versus Asuka championship match even. You know, like I said, have Asuka come up and take whatever title she wants, Raw or SmackDown, and hold on to that until Mania, and let's have that big main event with her and Ronda because that, like I said, that, that could be a money-making main event. That would bring in numbers. That would bring in the ticket sales for sure. So, great match. Asuka retains over Ember Moon. And then the main event, which, well, has uh, most of the newsworthy tidbits of the night. I mean, first off, you had Bobby Roode versus Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre defeats Bobby Roode. You know, that's already newsworthy in itself because Bobby Roode has been an excellent champion for NXT. He's been the biggest thing, I think, for NXT so far. Bobby Roode is awesome. He's glorious, as the song says. And, uh... Yeah, Bobby Roode, I can't wait to see him on SmackDown because that's the uh, that's the word going around is that SmackDown is going to be his new home soon here. And uh, Drew McIntyre defeats Bobby Roode. I, I love it. You know, it's good to see Drew McIntyre with some gold around his waist in WWE. You know, he first came. You know, there's a lot of promise. He was the chosen one, as Vince put it. And then he kind of just, you know, they just kind of fumbled with him. And he was part of three-man band. And then, you know, here we are a few years later. Who would have thunkin'? Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre are both main eventing for their brands, and they are uh, championship matches, and uh, both of them have gold around their waist. That's crazy to think, you know, just to think where they came from uh, the 3MB days. So, hey, obviously that was what they needed to go through to get where they are now. So, and you know, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have gone back and done it any other way if they knew it was going to lead to where they're at now. And uh, Drew McIntyre versus Bobby Roode was a pretty much straightforward um, main event quality type match. Back and forth, back and forth. Great match. Drew McIntyre starts selling the back there a little bit. Uh, I actually kind of thought Bobby Roode was going to win. And then Drew McIntyre, you know, hits him. And uh, hits him with the finisher and puts him away for the 1-2-3. But then, of course, the big newsworthy uh, tidbits after that. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, Red Dragon, come back out to the ring and they're approaching, or, you know, like they're going to enter the ring, taunting at uh, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre's facing them. All of a sudden, you can see the crowd start going crazy. And lo and behold, out of nowhere comes Adam Cole, bay, bay. Adam Cole, former Bullet Club Ring of Honor champ in NXT. And they've been talking about it. And I actually read somewhere after uh, my last podcast that I recorded that they were actually planning in uh, a Ring of Honor type of invasion angle for nxt so that's gonna be huge i can't wait to see all that 
Adam Cole. I've been waiting for him to come to NXT um, for a while now. It's it's awesome to see him here, and I can't wait to see where uh, where they're gonna take this this whole uh, alliance with him and uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, and uh, obviously that's gonna be uh, Drew McIntyre's next opponent. <clears throat> so we'll see how that goes. But all in all, overall, NXT, uh, great show, another great show. You know, if I had to do the five out of five star thing, yep, that's exactly what I would give it. Five out of five. Six out of five stars, uh, you know, Metzler going with six star matches apparently now. But uh, yeah, I, I would have given it definitely five out of five. Great pay-per-view all around, top to bottom. Couldn't complain about anything. Excellent show. Uh, but, you know, wish I could say the same for the main roster show. Uh, unfortunately, here we go. We're going to get started with the SummerSlam recap. So I didn't get to catch the, uh, the pre-show. Uh, but we'll go over the pre-show matches quickly here. Six-man tag team kickoff match. Uh, the Miz Taraj, The Miz and Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel defeated Jason Jordan and the Hardy Boys. Uh, why didn't they have the Intercontinental defended instead of that six-man tag match? Beats me. Have no idea why. Uh, oh, because Vince is in charge. That's why. So there's that match. Uh, the Once again, just, you know, continuously showing that he Vince doesn't care about the cruiserweight division anymore. The cruiserweight championship was also defended in the kickoff pre-show. Neville regained the cruiserweight championship, which that was a you know big surprise. I predicted uh, Neville going in as the champ and retaining, but then on Raw last week for some reason they had Tazawa fighting his SummerSlam opponent, the cruiserweight champion Neville, and Tazawa beats him on Raw taken the uh the belt from neville and then they had their match at SummerSlam, anyways and neville won i yeah the things that they do sometimes i just i just don't understand it so neville is still the cruiserweight champion after regaining it from losing it last week on raw yay smackdown tag team championship heard it was a good match the usos defeat the new day they regained the tag team champions for smackdown from the new day I'm actually really happy with the Usos now. You know, I, I didn't really care too much for them before this heel character change. And they've been doing great as heels. Uh, their run, I, I've been enjoying them a lot. I actually don't mind watching them now, uh, you know, when they come out. I've always liked their their entrance they did when they were baby faces. The whole Samoan chanting and the music and everything. That was really cool. I just, I really didn't buy into them. You know, I couldn't get behind them in matches or anything. But now, you know, I, I tend to root for them more. And then, uh, so that was your pre-show matches. And next, oh, God. Baron Corbin takes on John Cena in the opening match of SummerSlam and loses. Baron Corbin defeated by Cena. Like always, Cena wins. LOL. The usual. Uh, so Baron Corbin's push apparently has come to a stall. Uh, at first, I was hearing that it had to do with the fact that he bombed in his promos uh, with his mat or with John Cena as they were building up their uh, feud for their match at SummerSlam. Vince wasn't happy. He felt Baron was performing poorly on the mic. But apparently I was reading earlier that it also has something to do with his behavior on social media. Not sure what that's about. But <clears throat> apparently his push is being put to a halt for right now. You can, you know, that's very apparent in the way they booked the cashing in of the Money in the Bank Baron Corbin, another thing that I had predicted was going to happen at SummerSlam, but then they pull a swerve on us by screwing Baron Corbin over and having him cash in on SmackDown last week, and Jinder beat him in 10 seconds by rolling him up because Cena distracted Baron Corbin. So that just goes to show you right there that uh, his push has came to a halt. So look, look to see Baron Corbin lose some more probably in the next few weeks here on SmackDown, hoping maybe he goes to Raw to kind of reset him have a restart, refresh in the character. Doesn't look like that's going to happen because word is John Cena is actually scheduled to be on Raw tonight and he might be one of the uh, big shakeups in the superstar shakeup. It's time to shake things up again, as Vince would say. So, good God. So, there you go. Baron Corbin's push is over for right now. And that also uh, led to another rumor that that could be why Bobby Roode is coming up to take Baron's spot in that push. So, I mean, that's a good thing for all of us because 
I can't wait to see Bobby Roode on there. And the dream match that I want to see is Bobby Roode, Randy Orton. That is going to tear the house down, hopefully, if Randy Orton wants to work. And the next match, we have Natalia versus Naomi. A very straightforward match, actually. Very happy with the outcome. I predicted it. Uh, Natalia defeating Naomi for the SmackDown's Women Championship. And Carmella did not come out. Didn't feel right anyways. She, you know, some people were thinking that she was going to come out and cash in. Um, but it didn't happen. It didn't really feel like that was going to happen after Natalia defeated Naomi. Defeated her cleanly with the sharpshooter, I might add. Uh, pretty good match. You know, not, not too bad. Actually, I think... Uh, Leading up to that point, you know, only second match of the night, that was a better match than uh, John Cena and Baron Corbin, I have to say. Better match than the next match as well, which no one cared about. You could tell Big Cass versus The Big Show with Enzo and Mori hoisted above in the shark cage watching below. And then, you know, Enzo does his big spot in the match where he rubs himself down with baby oil and slips out of the cage and comes down to help the Big Show, and he's met with a big boot by Big Cass, and then Big Cass defeats the Big Show. No one cared, except they they reacted when Enzo slipped out of the cage and got down, but that was about all they cared about in that match. So, Big Cass over Big Show. No one cares. Uh, big Cass, he does have a big future. You can see it now. Now, after that promo he cut last week where he was talking about like Enzo every week, uh, it seems like more and more people in the back hate Enzo Amore because, you know, his attitude and he stays in character and he annoys people. Uh, if they let him do more promos like that, Big Cass is going to be a big star for sure. And he just needs to hang with some experienced veterans in the ring to teach him how to wrestle a little, uh, you know, become a better wrestler. Let's just say it. And I think he could uh, do very well. Let, let him hang with Carl Anderson and uh, Luke Gallows there, the club. Get some experience off of those guys. Rub elbows with them. The next match, which was a uh, pretty good match as well. I would say better better than the SmackDown Women's Champ match. Probably up until this point ended up being the best match so far. Sasha Banks versus Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss is just... She's really um, she's really developed this character. And she's, she's really sitting in there well now with it. I love it. Just coming out there with that stone face. You know, she's a small, small, you know, little girl, short girl, five foot one. But like she says, five feet of fury. And she was really uh, letting that fury, uh, let, she was letting that go on display for everyone to see. She really works that character really well. And she was uh, working over Sasha there for a good while. She was actually dominating Sasha for a while. Just just being mean and brutal in that ring. And that was great. That, that fits her character well, her personality. And Sasha... You know, she came back with the victory. She she tapped out Alexa Bliss with the uh, the bank statement there, and she is now your champ. I'm actually looking forward to see where they're going with this because you know everyone's thinking the Sasha heel turn on Bailey, but I'm thinking the Bailey heel turn on Sasha because you know look at Bailey's had a watch championship opportunity slip by, and now she's injured, uh, and now her friend, her best friend, has the championship, and of course Bailey wants that belt back. So I don't know, but then again, you know she's. She's, I, I want to say no, no heel turn. I was about to say it, but then I kind of stopped myself because I remembered the reaction Bailey's been getting lately. And she's been getting a lot of boos when she shows up on camera or is mentioned <clears throat> on WWE TV. And, uh, you know, she was, she did not look too happy with the boos uh, a few weeks ago on Raw when they were talking about her injury. She was actually responding pretty uh, negatively to it. You could tell it was bothering her. And I, I think they could work that in there with a heel turn. I think that would be great to see her as a heel. You wouldn't expect it. At least her kid fans wouldn't. And uh, next match. Oh, God. This is another one that just has me scratch my head. They gave Rusev the Baron treatment. And I don't know if I don't know of anything that Rusev has done to deserve you know poor treatment. Rusev, I, like SmackDown, him going to SmackDown and coming back from this injury was a chance to just reboot him. He lost against Cena against that, on that stupid uh, flag on a pole match. And then he loses in a short match against Randy Orton. He beats up Randy Orton pre-match. And then when the bell rings, gets RKO'd and pins. Yeah, yeah. Don't why why have that match on the pay per view? That was stupid. Why do that to Rusev? Rusev, who can be a credible threat to any championship. He's a badass. He's a Russian Bulgarian brute. He he has experience in judo and Muay Thai. So come on, let him be a beast. Why why doesn't Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon see that? Like, or maybe they do, and Vince just kind of overrides anything that they want to do. I don't I don't understand it because 
if I was Daniel and Shane, I'd realize the potential there. I'm like, hey, he could be our Brock Lesnar of SmackDown, you know? He's not as big as Brock. He didn't go to the UFC, but he's a badass, a legit, you know, a legit fighter type, you know, guy he can be. I mean, like I said, experienced in judo and Muay Thai, just all around good wrestler in the ring, you know, pro wrestling style. So, like, why not? Why wouldn't you want to build him up as a monster? Because you're not going to do it with Baron Corbin, apparently, now. I don't know. I just don't understand that. Uh, next match, another one that I I, uh, I saw going the way it did, but the match wasn't that great. Glad they didn't do any over-the-top Hocus Pocus uh, Mumbo Jumbo in it. The demon, Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt. Finn Balor goes over Bray Wyatt, which you know was very apparent was going to happen when they had their match. Another pre-SummerSlam you know SummerSlam match. They had their match on Raw, which was stupid, because they were going to fight at SummerSlam. Why do you have these matches on Raw and SmackDown when they're going to fight on the pay-per-view? You're big. It's supposed to be your WrestleMania of the summer. Why are you giving away these matches for free? I don't understand it. And Bray Wyatt beat Finn Balor. So, I mean, does a Finn Balor victory at SummerSlam really even mean anything now? Like, as much as I could have if they didn't fight on Raw? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's good for Bray because he got, you know, it's one-on-one -one now with him and Balor. They're one-to-one. -one. Bray got a pin on Finn last week on Raw. Balor got a pin over him on SummerSlam, which probably means they're going to continue this feud. It's not a bad thing. It's just, they, it could be so much better. It could be so much better given the two, you know, wrestlers involved in the storyline. Next match, uh, this is where the crowd finally started getting hot for the pay-per-view. The Raw Tag Team Championship match. Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. The Shield, basically, again. Um, not going by that name, but they've decided to work together again. And the crowd popped huge for that on Raw last week when they held the fist out to the Shield uh, you know, fist bump on Raw last week. Signaling that they were getting back together for a tag team match against Cesaro and Sheamus. The Bar. They are the Bar, and they are badass. Cesaro and Sheamus are awesome. <laughs> of course, one of the great parts of that match was the uh, Cesaro uh, grabbing the beach ball from the fans and ripping it apart because they were too busy playing with that instead of play, uh, paying attention to the match, I, I think is how Cesaro took it, even though they were pretty invested and involved in the match. It was a pretty hot match, and uh, that was great, though. Cesaro just just ruins everybody's fun by grabbing that beach ball and tearing it up in front of everybody on, on the WWE Network for nah, da 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 that was great, though. Great match, though. Excellent match. Best match of the card um, so far up to that point. And that really lit up the crowd. And it and it helped that uh, Dean and Seth won because that really brought the crowd to, uh, to life when they got the pinfall. Uh, Dean Ambrose hits the Dirty Ds on Sheamus for the 1-2-3. New tag team champions, the former Shield, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. And the next match... Top that match because this match, given the two superstars involved, you couldn't doubt that. AJ Styles, the phenomenal one, United States champion versus Kevin Owens with Shane McMahon as a special guest referee. Referee, a lot of drama in that one. Uh, you had to have known that was going to happen because Shane's involvement in that match. Uh, actually, kind of going toe to toe with both Kevin Owens and AJ Styles, having a little shoving match with both of them, and uh, ends with the uh, AJ Styles. Uh, getting well, first it out of what happened was Kevin Owens actually pinned AJ Styles, but he didn't see that AJ Styles' foot touched the rope. Shane did. He counted the three, but saw the foot on the rope, so he told the timekeeper, no, that was just a two. AJ's foot was on the rope, and then Owens got up. He was pissed. Start pushing Shane. Shane pushed Owens back. They start going at it. Um, AJ wins with a, with two uh, Styles Clash. He gets him with a phenomenal forearm, and then a Styles Clash, and pins him for the one, two, three. Um, you know, rumor has it, it's, this is supposed to, uh, set the, uh, the gears in motion for a Shane McMahon versus a, uh, Kevin Owens team at Survivor Series, actually more hoping for a one-on-one -on -one match between the two, because I think the two could have a great match together, but looks like it's going to lead to a Survivor Series angle, uh, pitting a team of Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, AJ Styles, still your United States champion. And then this match Shocker, did not call it at all. Jinder Mahal defeats Shinsuke Nakamura. I was kind of thinking to myself too. I'm like, man, if Jinder loses, like, what's next for him? Where, where is there for him to go after this? Nowhere. He, he, he came from 3MB, got fought, you know, let go, comes back. He was looked at nothing more than he was just going to be an enhancement talent on Raw and SmackDown. He was just going to be the guy that comes out there, looks mean and big, but he was going to lose all, all these matches really quick. 
And then all of a sudden, he wins that number one contendership, and he's fighting Randy Orton for the title. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is just going to be a filler match. This is just one for Randy Orton to get over on someone for a small pay-per-view before we go into a bigger, you know, the SummerSlam season. And no, Randy Orton loses to Jinder, and uh, Jinder's been your champ uh, for a few months now. And going into SummerSlam, you had to have been thinking, oh, Shinsuke, this is going to be his time. Time to win the title. No, uh, Jinder beats him, and, you know, you didn't even have that whole looming... Uh, thought of Baron Corbin cashing it in because that one was already ruined on SmackDown, losing his cashing in uh, of the briefcase on SmackDown. So you didn't have that hanging over your head of the possibility of that Baron Corbin might come out and cash in his money in the bank. So you were already thinking Shinsuke is going over big time. Nope. Jinder beats him uh, with help, of course, of the Singh brothers. But man, I really have no idea what they were thinking and what, you know, what's the story behind that? Could be because Shinsuke dropped Cena on his head a few weeks ago. Maybe that's a little punishment. Or maybe they just feel like we can uh, get one more out of this program between the two, and then Shinsuke can win it next month. So we'll see. Hopefully uh, they start going on the right track here with Shinsuke because, uh, you know, the fans are behind him, and they were clearly behind him last night, and then, you know, you kind of pull the rug out from under them. So hopefully this doesn't deter anyone away from him or, you know, makes people hesitant to get fully invested in Shinsuke because he's too good to get ruined by the usual booking of Vince McMahon and WWE's not-so-genius creative team. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. And then the final match, which uh, between this and the tag team match or the AJ and Kevin match was match of the night, probably. <laughs> Man, this one was just a demolition derby all the way through. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe and Braun versus Braun Strowman. Just mentioning those four names in the same match, you already know it's going to be uh, chaotic, and you know it's going to be a war. And man, that was a war. They were fighting all over, just tearing things apart, just you know, getting speared through barricades and tearing tables apart. How about Strowman manhandling Lesnar in the match? Like they finally have their one-on-one -on -one in the match, and Les uh, Strowman just manhandles Lesnar and throwing him around, throwing him through a table. Power slamming him through two tables and then dumping a third table on top of him. They stretch her Lesnar out of the building. The match is going on. Those uh, Roman, Samoa, and Braun just going at it. Braun just killing everybody. And then uh, Roman and Samoa, they, you know, they have their beef, so they're going at it. And then Lesnar comes back out, runs down to the ring, and he starts suplexing everybody left and right. F5s uh, Roman and gets the pin. Chaotic match, crazy match, awesome match, and I think the match was about 19 minutes long, so uh, if you have the network and you didn't watch SummerSlam, at least go back for that match, because that match was crazy. I predicted Brock going over, and he did, just because of the fact that they were playing up the whole, like, John Jones thing, and then uh, the fact that Paul kept saying, oh, if Brock loses, me and P Brock Lesnar are leaving the WWE. Just because they were playing on that fact, you know they can, you know, or that little, uh, little angle, you know that that meant Lesnar was going to win um, just because they were teasing that. So now uh, I guess looks like they're probably going to go through with uh, what was talked about for a while now, that Lesnar was going to hold on to the title until Mania next year. I, I, for one, am happy with that. Why not? Get the most out of you, uh, out of Lesnar, you know? Y you know he's not probably he's probably not going to renew his contract for Mania and even if, or after Mania. And even if he does, you know, the... Stipulation in that contract was going to be, hey, you got to let me fight John Jones first, though. So, you know, he's going to be gone for a while after Mania. Because if him and John Jones are going to have like a summer blockbuster fight, it's going to happen in August probably of next year. So, you know, that's going to be one of the conditions. But either way, whether he's coming back or not after Mania, just, just milk him for what he's worth. Get everything out of him. You know, he's going to do it. He's going to show up. He's going to give you crazy matches. He's going to give you Brock Lesnar, like, Bro you know, like only Brock Lesnar can. So let him let him hold on to the title. Let him have some crazy matches. Give him and Strowman a match. Lesnar goes over. Give him a match against all the top contenders you have on Raw. And then at Mania, like I said, let's get a Balor, a Balor win at Rumble. Balor versus Lesnar at Mania next year. Balor unleashes the club on Lesnar. They dethrone the beast. They slay the beast. And the Demon King is now the top of the mountain. Or on the top of the mountain and is your universal champion. And you can go with so many... So many great storylines from there on out. And then have Lesnar come back after his fight with Jones, <clears throat> which Lesnar will win. But, yeah, so that was the recap of uh, SummerSlam and uh, NXT TakeOver. Looking forward to Raw and SmackDown tonight. Uh, 
a lot of newsworthy stuff I'm sure is going to come from the shows tonight and tomorrow. So, you know, and then NXT, of course, on Wednesday. Well, NXT is just going to be kind of a highlight of the weekend. But, um, you know, from here on out after, uh, going to be a lot of good stuff to highlight and go over on my podcast. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the show today. Was just wanting to do a uh, recap of NXT TakeOver and SummerSlam. I will more than likely record a another podcast for uh, this week for Raw and SmackDown going over what happened because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff to talk about after these two shoes are done and over with. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Stay informed. Uh, I do have a $30 gift card giveaway next month. It'll be to celebrate the release of Destiny 2. Can't wait for that game. All you got to do is subscribe to my channel. And then on September 6th, comment on the video that I upload, whether it's a live stream or just an upload of me playing Destiny 2. Comment in that video that you subscribe to my channel. Leave your subscription uh, list public so I can see that you subscribe to my channel. And then I will uh, randomize it. And then next Monday, or the Monday or Tuesday after that, I will release my podcast. And I will announce the winner at the beginning of the show on that one. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you want to see any other content on my YouTube channel that I haven't put up, you know, just leave in the comments of this video. Let me know uh, what else you want to see or what else you want me to talk about in my podcast other than video games, you know, wrestling. Um, when I do start talking more about Studio One, Personas, uh, Studio One, the program that I record in. And uh, if you want, if just just anything else, maybe I'll do. I'm I'm thinking about doing a separate podcast of just strictly fantasy booking for WWE, where I go over how I would book a show, a Raw, a SmackDown, a main event, a, a pay per view, a WrestleMania, you know, whatever. So I'm thinking about doing another podcast of that. And um, like I mentioned earlier, I'm thinking about doing, uh, or I'm thinking about doing a a, a different podcast, um, more Raw, uncut, maybe longer. Not for YouTube. I, I think, I want, like I said, I want to keep YouTube more family friendly. Um, just because, like I said, you know, I want to attract the most, you know, eyes and ears to my business. And I want to reach a broader um, audience for it. So, yeah, maybe I'll do something like that. A separate uh, podcast specifically or exclusively for SoundCloud. And then uh, the one I do on YouTube, you know, I'll have on YouTube and SoundCloud as well. And uh, I'm going to have this podcast and all my other podcasts, past and future episodes, available for download. So if you don't have a SoundCloud account, just, uh, you know, it's free. Sign up for it, and then you can download all my stuff. You know, follow me on SoundCloud as well once you get that. And uh, I'll upload all my podcasts and everything else that I upload to YouTube on there so you can download it. And, uh, you know, if you maybe you want this to download without going on SoundCloud, just shoot me an email at uh, mastercdpstudios at outlook.com and just tell me that you want a downloaded version. You know, you want the WAV file, and I'll send it to you. Um, that'll make it easier on you if you do actually want to listen to this podcast, if you enjoy this podcast. Um, so, you know, I do appreciate anyone that does listen to this and uh, gives me some, you know, positive feedback on it. That's awesome uh, to know that there are some people out there that enjoy this show. So I look forward to doing more of this because, you know, I get to talk about the things I love, video games, music, and wrestling. So with that being said, this was another episode of the podcast sessions here on Master CDP Studios. This is Chris Prescott. Stick around.